Hi, I'm Tam at the Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of June 9th. Coming down off that huge series of flares and solar storm that we had just a, almost a couple weeks ago now, we really have seen the sun die down in activity. It is littered with uh, active regions, but all we've really seen are some filament and prominence eruptions. We do have uh, some wind from this small coronal hole that we're expecting, and region 2381 has popped off a few M-class flares, but other than that, we really haven't seen too much. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the last in that huge set of, of M-flares back on the 25th, but since then things have died down with that region rotating behind the backside, and things have stayed pretty quiet. We had a little activity uh, with a very small M-class flare on the 3rd, and then things died back down again, and now region 2381 is kicking activity back up with the largest flare being a one point, M1.7, but it is since showing signs of decay, and so most likely, unless it grows again, we won't see any more M-flares. Now, we have seen some solar radiation storms recently. We actually peaked up at an S3 level back when we had that huge solar storm, and then things kind of died down, but they didn't go away. We've been hovering around the S1 storm level for quite a few days until things finally died down about the beginning of the month, and then we popped back up in the beginning of July for one more little round where it was enhancement, but things have finally died down, and so the amateur radio, radio bands and GPS operations should be pretty good now. Switching to your solar storm conditions, here's that gorgeous G4 storm we had back on the 23rd that gave us aurora as far south as San Jose, California. I'll show that in a minute. Since then, things have quieted down for the most part. We had uh, a nice little show uh, on the 5th and the 6th of July, uh, which was kind of obscured because of that horrible fire in Canada, so we didn't get many aurora shots because of that. And since then, things have continued to quiet down, and we're just waiting for the next one to hit. And that huge solar storm back on the 23rd gave us a roar pretty much all over the world. Here, for example, is New Zealand and the Channel Islands in the UK. We got a roar in Cornwall, and here's 30,000 feet on a flight to Europe. We had a roar in Canada. People actually had to look south for the aurora. We had it in Moosehood, Maine, also gorgeous colors in Winslow, and in upstate New York. We had coronas over Lake Superior and also over Hartford, Wisconsin. We had gorgeous aurora high in the sky in New Hampshire. We had it in gorgeous colors in Billings, Montana that filled the sky. We had aurora in Iowa and as far south as North Georgia and Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania and also clear down in San Jose. Returning to the disk, you can see we actually have quite a few active regions in Earth view right now, but none of them have manifested any really large M-class flares. Re the big players have been region 2376 and now region 2381, because it's popped off a few M-class flares, but it is actually showing signs of decay, so we're not expecting anything big uh, from it until it begins to grow again. Uh, region 2384 is the newest player that's come onto the disk, and it actually let off a prominence eruption uh, just a, a day or so ago. So so we'll be watching it because as it rotates in the Earth strike zone, it may light off a solar storm that will be Earth directed. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some fast wind from a coronal hole that's just now entering Earth strike zone. NOAA is giving us about a 40% chance for a major storm at high latitudes on the 10th, with storming to continue into the 11th. Now at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about a 30% chance for active conditions, with storming to continue into the 11th, so there are some aurora possibilities. But as the week continues, things should die down, and uh, we're not anticipating any other solar storms at this time. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have regions 2376 and 2381, which have fired some large class flares. So NOAA is keeping our M-class flare risk up at 45% with the uh, possibility of decaying uh, over the next few days. It depends upon what region 2381 does. As far as solar radiation storms are concerned, we're all in the green. We're not anticipating any uh, proton storms to hit us anytime soon. So this week, the activity level is at a low to a moderate level. The sun has had a few fits and starts, but nothing that's really manifested any big flares or any huge Earth-directed solar storms. Now, we are anticipating that fast wind from the coronal hole that's just entering the Earth strike zone, and that should hit us in the next day or two, and that could bring some aurora possibilities, mostly up at mid-latitudes, but maybe down at lower latitudes. Nothing like the G4 storm that we had just a couple weeks ago. But it may degrade the hand bands just a little bit, and I doubt that it's going to affect anything with GPS. But outside of that, 
everything should be pretty calm and I guess take a break and enjoy the quiet. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.